Hi there, my name is Fatula, your host here at All Things Agile, and today I'll be reviewing another book. It is The Agile Leadership Toolkit by Peter Conning. What is this book about and who is this book for? This book is about the development of specific skills for the Agile leader. And I know that if you're new to Agile, you're probably thinking Scrum and then you're wondering it's for the product owner, it's for the Scrum master. If you're more into Kanban, maybe you're thinking service delivery manager. But the reality it is that most Agile leaders are none of that. Agile leaders are usually involved both in the product piece and in the team piece. Overall, the Agile leader acts on culture, on customer and stakeholders relationship, on team enablement and success. And this book recognizes that by giving four areas that the Agile leader works on. And for each of the areas, he offers two tools to navigate them. I have three highlights for the book. And the first one is precisely that, is the fact that you have a navigation system, like a helm with the four areas for the Agile leader to focus on. And the four areas are co-creating goals, facilitating ownership, faster learning, very much forgotten sometimes, and designing healthy habits. In a nutshell, we are talking like this. Co-creating goals as it is a great idea to disseminate the goals and be very transparent, but a much more interesting one is to co-create, co-design them with your teams. Facilitating ownership. In other words, is how to create autonomy among your teams because people yearn to be really part of the solution, to be part of the thinking, not just of the doing and executing. But the empowerment piece is a funny one because you can't just empower people by saying, you're now empowered, go do the work. And the book touches on that. Faster learning is about what to measure and how to make sure you're not just getting faster at delivering, but faster at learning from your deliveries. Most companies are still in that mindset of a project and they want to end things, they want to deliver and that's finished. But in Agile, delivering is really just the beginning. That's where the learning starts. Finally, designing healthy habits is an important element for the Agile leader as a culture leader. Paying attention to how people behave and making sure that the good behavior sticks. There are two tools that I really liked in the book. And the first one is the KVI key value indicator. This is a numeric measure that makes the relationship between customer impact and company value very tangible. And in a way, it comes from a place of true service. It is also a contrast to most favorite tools that we use today, such as OKRs and impact mapping. Those, they are really, uh, they start from the business end of things. So we wanna grow by this much, or we want to increase revenue by this much. KVIs, on the other end, they literally start with the customer side of things. Say, for example, what are the two things that the customers want most right now? And it's not something generic like, yeah, they want better prices or they want faster deliveries. Suppose something rather specific. Uh, let's say you have customer on a certain um, delivery service that you're offering. It could be like a Uber Eats or whatever. And suppose that people actually want the ability to schedule or to influence at least the schedule of their deliveries. How would you know something like that? Well, you would know that by constantly connecting with and asking those things of your customers, serving in them and even analyzing their behavior. The argument for the KVI is simple. Whenever there is a clear impact for the customer, there is a direct positive impact for the company as well. And it's just a matter of making it come out. The second piece I really like was culture where Peter lists six ingredients for the agile leader to pay attention to, but a few specific ones really for them to focus on. And then he goes on on reminding us that there can be no agile environment without a true appreciation for the customer and for their success, a continuous flow of experiments ultimately leading to some sort of innovation at some point. There's a lot of learning, in particularly sharing of that learning. 
and a mindset and a culture of team thinking and team doing. There is no one-sided solutioning, one-sided rewards. It really is about harnessing the power of the collective for creativity, for better solutions. So there can be no contradictions between where the solutions come from, collective, the results are collective, and where the rewards go to, it has to remain collective. So if the cultural environment looks like that, how do you influence it? Peter suggests that you tap into habit. By changing habits, you change the culture because habits are an expression on how we think about things and how we do things. And on that note, he explores triggers and rewards and highlights that you, the agile leader, should make a point to pay attention and reward what is in alignment, behaviors that are in alignment with the agile cultural environment. And not only should you not encourage, you should not make light of what is unacceptable. Behaviors are everything and they really sneak in into changing and solidifying a culture. Quite honestly, that part made me think a little bit of a light version of two books, The Power of Habit and Atomic Habits, which are also great reads, but I'm not gonna review them right now. Agile Leadership Toolkit is a very actionable book. All the tools can be tested immediately and you can start with just one of them in just one of the areas. Remember, this is a navigation system, this is a helm. And Peter also includes on each chapter at least one story and they kind of bring to life a little bit the challenges and how the tools that he proposed can help with those challenges. It is a short read, but I don't recommend that you read it cover to cover. I recommend you to take it slow. This is not a novel. It is a book that really demands some reflection and most importantly, some application to really be useful. That's all I have to say for this book. Let me know what you think if you read it and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.